I'm Roman Dilley and let's talk about the blockchain and its many different use cases. I'm here with Nick Williamson from Credits. How are you, Nick? Good, how are you doing? So what have you been doing for Credits? Uh, yeah, so at Credits we've built a uh, built from scratch framework for creating interoperable built to purpose blockchains. So you can build your application as its own private blockchain network that other people can access and that can actually utilize in their own applications or services in an easy to use, interoperable way. So basically, it's not about the Bitcoin's blockchain here. It's all about building your own private blockchain for different use cases, right? Yeah, Bitcoin was one of the first mainstream uses we saw of blockchain technology, but we've uh, taken a lot of the concepts that allowed for um, the blockchain to be built in the first place. We brought them into more of an enterprise, more of a um, technology-driven environment. So what's the craziest use cases that you've seen using credits right now? Well, we have the world's first government service that's being run on a blockchain with the Isle of Man government. It's maintaining a registry of all the blockchain companies and blockchain adjacent companies on the Isle of Man. Um, we're also working with a lot of large financial institutions on various POCs and also potential um, commercial applications. Um, most of them revolving around capital markets or securities issues in some way so far, but we're also looking at payments applications and uh, things like supply chain finance. So let's say I'm a big bank and I want to try and play with some blockchain technology. Do I go to credits and sign up and, and start playing around with it so I can find a new use case with blockchain stuff? Yeah, that's coming very soon actually. So far we've kept the platform fairly closed and only ourselves and some of our initial customers have been using it. We're actually about to launch a partners program with people who want to build blockchain apps and services. And so we'll be launching that in late January, early February with a small initial list of uh, 20 to 30 companies, but we will be looking to expand that quite quickly. So and are we'll you looking at small companies or big companies? It'll be a mixture of startups, of um, large consulting firms of large financial institutions and even some academic institutions. But we'll also be launching a cloud offering early in 2016 on one of the major cloud platforms that will allow anybody cool. to start accessing it and using our framework. Cool, so it's going to be as easy as basically launching a server and running, running a blockchain on it, right? Yeah, so it'll be, uh, you can either choose the option of self-hosting your own nodes Okay. or allowing your customers to run the nodes, or with one click you can deploy a, a network to our cloud, which is especially useful for a more sandbox or experimental type of uh, endeavor. So I'm curious, how did you come up with the idea of building this kind of alternative, uh, alternative blockchains and not using the mainstream Bitcoin blockchain? Well, I've, I've been involved in Bitcoin since 2010. Uh, I was actually a professional poker player at the time, and I, oh, I cool. found the technology, and I found it interesting, so I started building a few things on top of Bitcoin, or um, Bitcoin adjacent with a few friends over the years. And um, after a few years, some ideas around alternate ways of using the blockchain for things other than just token transfers uh, uh, started to crystallize, and so I started to build uh, what eventually turned into credits. And that's been a multi-year process that's gone from a very cryptocurrency focused sort of application to now a very a much more general sort of framework uh, sort of focus. Okay, let's come back to the poker part because that's the interesting one. Sure. So what's the link between Bitcoin and poker? Like, were you betting in, in Bitcoin when you play, were playing poker or stuff like that? Um, I've actually never used Bitcoin to play poker, but that would be an interesting use case. Um, actually, uh, funny enough, one of the internal prototypes we've built at Credits is a fully functioning, completely decentralized poker room with no dealers. It all happens trustlessly and autonomously running on the Credits protocol. So in theory, you could build a poker room or uh, really any other type of turn-based game as a blockchain. Cool. cool. So do you think it's the future, having all these kind of decentralized applications running in different nodes around the world? Well, I think there's a lot of advantages that come from being able to do things such as the separation of security concerns and allowing even small organizations to quickly attain the level of trust that we usually only grant to larger corporations or larger institutions right now. So there's, there is a bit of um, an inefficiency compared to a completely centralized um, uh, 
uh, application in some of these use cases. So it really is going to be picking and choosing what it's good at, what it's bad at, and whether the trade-offs are worth it for any particular use case. But yeah, we foresee potentially billions of interlocking and cross-communicating blockchains being launched in the next few years. Cool. Cool. So um, I guess you know a lot of things about Bitcoins. So maybe we can talk a bit more about the current Bitcoin uh, market and stuff happening in Bitcoin as well. So what do you think? Is Bitcoin uh, going to come back into fashion? Because right now it's a bit of a slowdown and everything. So what do you think? Um, we'll really have to see. Right now there's a bit of a quagmire with the scaling debate. Bitcoin can only handle 2.7 transactions a second right now. So for, the, for it to ever reach mainstream, that's obviously going to have to be solved along with a lot of the usability concerns and security concerns. Some of that is coming, uh, becoming a little bit more polished, but it's, uh, it's not just Bitcoin or, or the legacy system anymore. There's a lot of new players out there, so um, we'll have to see how it, how it uh, shapes up as we go forward. Another one of the uh, impetuses uh, that you need to overcome if you're going to have something like Bitcoin succeed is the, to get over people's um, uh, incentive to use pounds or euros or dollars. Right now, um, one of the big hurdles to Bitcoin adoption is obviously going to be, why would I use this currency that I'm not used to? And it comes with all this ideological baggage and Yeah, and else. a lot of fear around all this idea of trusting something new. All right, thank you very much for your time. But this is, this is credits, and there you have it.